What's up, everyone? My name is Jason, and I'm one of the pastors here at Northwest Christian Church. I'm really glad you're all here today. It's been such a great summer so far, and there is more to come. Here at Quest Kids, we've been uh, taking a closer look to see what it means to have faith. Faith is trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. Sometimes faith takes a little focus. We have to take a closer look at what we can see so we can know how to trust in what we can see. Just as not seeing you has been hard, I know you are there by what I can see, the letters, emails, and the thank you cards. Okay, I'm going to have to pause today's lesson. I, I was going to wait till the end, but I just can't wait. I have some good news. Wait, no, that's not it. I have some amazing, fantastic, so awesome news I could just explode. Next Sunday, Father's Day, two of our three campuses will have Quest Kids Live. That's right. Birth through fifth grade will be able to meet at the Mac and Newburgh campuses for Sunday services. I'm so excited. If you are part of the Mac family Quest Kids, services will be at the 9 and 1030. If you're at the Newburgh campus for Quest Kids, we'll be holding service at the 930 and 11. We can't wait to see you. We have an amazing team who is so excited to see you guys. They have been working hard preparing rooms so we can meet. Changes have been made to meet the, the social distancing guidelines and keep rooms clean so we can all stay healthy. I also want to ask you to be praying for the Tiger campus so they'll be able to meet soon too. For those who can't make it, don't worry. We are planning on keeping the Quest Kids TV going even when all the campuses are back up and running to full strength. Many of you have let us know how much you appreciate being able to watch us online. So as long as you guys keep watching and sharing Quest Kids TV with your family and friends, we will be here. Okay, unpause. Last week we talked about a man named Saul, who soon would be known as Paul, but for now, he's Saul. Saul was a religious leader who was not a fan of Jesus or Jesus' followers. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. He didn't believe Jesus died, rose again, and went back to heaven. Saul made it his, well, his mission to hunt down the people who followed Jesus. One day, Saul and a few men headed to the city of Damascus. He had permission from the high priest to arrest anyone there who followed Jesus. On the way, Jesus himself appeared to Saul in a blinding light from heaven. The light was so bright, well, Saul was blinded. He could no longer see. Jesus told Saul to continue his journey into Damascus, and there he would be told what to do next. Because Saul was blind, the men traveling with him led him to town, where he stayed with a man named Judas. And there's where this week's stories begin. But before we continue with this week's story, I think it's time that we play a little music, do a little dancing, and we show God how much we love him. Oh 
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 10 through 31. Ananias, a believer in the city of Damascus, paced the floor of his room. What will we do, Lord? Several days before, the Jesus followers in Damascus had received terrible news. Saul of Tarsus is on his way. He has permission from the high priest to arrest anyone who follows the way of Jesus and take them to Jerusalem. Ananias shivered as he stared at his door. Why haven't we heard anything yet? He knew that at any moment, guards could knock on his door. A voice could shout out his name. Ananias. <sighs> Ananias had nearly jumped out of his skin. And then he quickly realized that the voice hadn't come from outside. Um, it hadn't come from inside either. There was only one person it could be. Yes, Lord? Yep, Ananias knew that this was a vision from God. So he took a deep breath and waited for what the Lord had to say. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. <gasps> Ananias gasped in shock. God wanted him to seek out his enemy? Saul is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man come and place his hands on him so he could see again. That man's name is Ananias. <sighs> a million thoughts tumbled through Ananias' head. At last, he found his voice. I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. It must have seemed like a home run argument to Ananias, but God responded. Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. Uh, I, well, Okay, here goes. So Ananias grabbed his cloak and hurried through the dusty city. But as he finally reached Straight Street, his steps slowed. He forced himself to breathe evenly as he approached the home of Judas. Help me, Jesus. Give me the words to say. Ananias stood in front of the door for a long moment, gathering courage. Then he knocked. Boom, boom, boom. What do you want? Ananias shared his vision. As Judas led Ananias through the house, Judas explained, Saul won't eat or drink anything, not since they led him here three days ago. Ananias peered into the back room. A man was kneeling there, his hands knotted in prayer. And even though the man's eyes were open, they didn't focus on anything. Who's there? Before he could lose his nerve, Ananias went straight to Saul and put his hands on Saul's shoulders. Brother Saul, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. As Saul blinked in surprise, something like scales dropped from his eyes. I, I, my eyes. I can see. Saul leapt to his feet and faced Ananias. I need to be baptized this instant. Now Saul, also known as Paul, had always been relentless in his quest to wipe out the believers. But now that he himself had met Jesus, he was equally determined to share the good news. Within days, he started preaching at Jewish synagogues. Jesus is the Son of God. Is it Saul the man who caused great trouble in Jerusalem for those who worship Jesus? Hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners? Though Saul now believed in Jesus, he still had much to learn, and he wanted to discover all the answers himself with God's help. So he spent several years studying the scriptures, and after that time, he came back teaching and preaching about Jesus as fiery as ever. Jesus is the Messiah. 
He fulfills every promise in Scripture. The Jews in Damascus and even the governor of the city uh, were angry at all the um, upset Saul was causing. Time for him to uh, sleep with the fishes, shall we say? They made plans to capture and kill Saul, but Saul and his friends discovered the plot. It appears they've even guarded the gates. That leaves the windows. Saul's friends led him to a home built into the city wall. When it was dark, they brought out a large basket. You gotta be kidding me. You really wanna try the gates? Saul stepped into the container and his friends lowered him out the window and down the wall on a rope. Never thought I'd end up as a basket case. <sighs> Once safely out of Damascus, Saul set out for Jerusalem. Home sweet home. When he arrived in Jerusalem, Saul immediately tried to join the group of believers there, but they were afraid of him at first. One man, Barnabas, had already heard Saul's story. Cheer up, man. I know you're the real deal. Let me take you to the apostles. So Barnabas did exactly as he promised. He took Saul to Peter and James and the other leaders of the early church and told them the whole story. So Saul stayed with the believers in Jerusalem and preached there just as boldly as he'd done in Damascus. And once again, a group of Jews became upset with him. Someone send that man to sleep with the fishes. But once again, the believers helped Saul escape. This time he went back to his hometown of Tarsus to wait for God's next directions. In the meantime, the group of believers in Judea and Samaria continued to grow through the power of God's Spirit. From the very beginning of time, God has always been there to help his people. Starting with Adam and Eve, Moses, David, and then God would send Jesus at the right time for us all. God has always kept his promises. Because he sent Jesus, we know we can trust him no matter what. Just like Ananias, who was brave enough to obey God and visit Saul, even though he had heard all about Saul and what he had done. Like Barnabas, who was brave enough to speak up for Saul and help the leaders trust him. And we can't forget Saul, who was brave enough to speak up about Jesus, even though he knew not everyone would be happy because of what he had done in his past. All three of them were able to show such bravery because they knew Jesus. Bottom line, knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. When you're afraid, remember that God is with you. Even though you can't see him, you can trust him. He can give you the strength to do something you're scared to do. Maybe you're a little afraid to tell the truth because you're worried you're going to get in trouble. Or you might be afraid to be kind to someone who hasn't been kind to you. It's normal to be worried about something like that. And you should definitely be careful if you don't trust someone. But at the same time, we know Jesus can help you face your fears and give someone a second chance. And here's another cool thing. And not only do we have a relationship with Jesus to help us face our fears, but when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we also have the Holy Spirit with us. He will help guide and direct us. Okay, now it's time to head on over to Brianna and see what she has for us as we continue our journey of focusing in on Jesus. Take it away, Brianna. Thanks, Jason. This week's activity is called What's That Fear? And how fitting, since we have to focus to overcome our fears. What you need, Play-Doh, markers, and paper. Pick one person to go first and ask that person, what are they afraid of? That's easy for me. I am totally afraid of snakes. I am really scared of them. I'm talking really. Make sure you follow instructions on the activity guide. And if you don't have the activity guide, no worries. Click the link in the description below. Bottom line, knowing Jesus can help us face all of our fears. Have fun this week, and we cannot wait to see you guys. We are so, so excited.